Manchester United's form right now in the Premier League, sensational. 15 points from our last 18. The only game we lost, we know, was Man City. It was a step too far for this United team. But inside those games, we've beaten Liverpool. We've beaten Arsenal. And now in our next three games, we play against sixth. We play against fourth. We play against third in Newcastle, Spurs and Chelsea. This, for me, feels like the biggest test of this Ten Hag team so far. I think we've passed with flying colours in certain uh, challenges and failed in others. And in this video, I'm going to run through what my starting eleven would be for that game against Newcastle on Sunday. Because there's a lot of positives we can take from these last three games. I think you know what they are. And I also think you know what the frustrations are. And that's all to do with finishing, really. I'm going to run through Ten Hag's best team and the changes I think he will make and the tactical look at the game coming up. Make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. But as I said, woo, look at the fixtures we've got coming up. Newcastle on Sunday. Spurs on Wednesday and then Chelsea next Saturday. And just one look at the Premier League. We're sitting in fifth at the moment. So we're playing Newcastle right now, who are just below us. Then we're playing Chelsea, who are banging form under a great... Then we play Spurs, sorry. And they're, well, they're... they're what do you say Spurs are going to be the hardest of the three games? Uh, Chelsea are banging form under Graham Potter. But who do you think will be starting the game? Now, the first thing I want to say here is I don't think Eric Ten Hag has to... Rip up trees here. I don't think he's going to be making wholesale, widespread changes. I don't think he needs to. I don't think he will want to. That will be the main message he gives these players going into this game on Sunday. Like, keep doing what you are doing. And if we do that and we improve how clinical we are in front of goal, we'll absolutely smash it. At some point, I know it, at some point there will be a game that we win by like three or four goals. I thought that was going to come against Omanir. It didn't. It could have come in any of the last three games. I would say it's unlikely in the next three games, given it's tougher opposition. But this United team is starting to click, starting to show new resilience, starting to show just new elements. Now, this was the team that started against uh, Omania, the game that we just saw. If I'm looking at probably the most important player of the day, I'd probably say it was Casemiro. I thought he was fantastic. Of course, Lindelof stepped in for the injured Varane. Fred came in for Eriksen. That was a change there. And I think that was the only... No, Matasia down there at left back in for Luke Shaw as well. Now, I imagine there will be some changes for this game. And I think the first one, in my opinion, has to be the return of Rafael Varane. I think he's going to be fit enough. Uh, it all, of course, obviously, this all depends around fitness. But for me, if we're looking at one of the sort of cornerstones of how much this United team has improved so far this season... I have to say, it's these two. Having that actual centre-back partnership of Varane and Martinez has made such a big difference to this United team. It really, really has. Those two together, they seem to balance well. It just it, They complement each other well. And you, you've got to find that. When you find a centre-back partnership that complements each other well, their strengths come out. Now, I think the Varane will come back into the team. I actually think Lind Victor Lindos played pretty well in a couple of games he's played. But Varane, I think he's our... Easily our outstanding choice to partner with Sandro Martinez. Now, Isaac isn't going to be playing in the uh, on the weekend. I think he's going to be missing. Uh, so I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. But Martinez is sort of... I want to see Martinez bringing the ball up through there a little bit. And that, that's what this is what Martinez does. Those sorts of vertical passing. Now, of course, I don't think it's going to be Fred who's playing on Sunday. Well, let's find out. But I that's, that's one change I would make. I'll take Lindelof and I'll put Varane in. And the second conversation you've got to have around defence is around Malasia or Luke Shaw. Now, Malasia, remember when he came in, I think it was Liverpool, he came in in blistering form. He's hit, he's hit a little bit of, um, I wouldn't say it's a rough patch now. He, he's had a couple of wobbles for sure. And at the same time, Luke Shaw has come and sort of reaffirmed his position as Manchester United's first choice left back. And in my opinion, I expect this to be a change that we see on Sunday too. I expect Madisea to he started against Omanir. I think Luke Shaw's affected the game. His best performance came when he started against Everton, and he's affected the game from the bench against uh, Omanir both times, home and away. In my opinion, I want to see Luke Shaw down here. I actually think the partnership he had with Marcus Rashford was pretty good. I thought there was some good. Uh, no, sorry, it was with um, it was with Jaden Sancho down the left hand side, wasn't it? Towards the end of the game. I think Luke Shaw will be starting this game. I think that will be the right call from Eric Ten Hag. Uh, Madison will get his... 
the one big thing about these my selections that I'm doing across everything, and I will do, is it's based on form. Eric Ten Hag is clearly a form-based manager, which I think is the smartest thing to do. Therefore, you don't get tied into player loyalties that are undeserved. You don't get stuck in playing individuals. As soon as McTominay was out of form, Casemiro came in. And Casemiro, the reason that, there's a reason there's a picture of him on my wall. I've been waiting so long, so long for Manchester United to sign a bloody defensive midfielder. And Casemiro is just bossing it. In the last couple of games, he really has bossed it. I actually still expect... I expected Casemiro more to operate in sort of that position there. But I think what we're seeing, a little bit more surprisingly so, we're kind of seeing Casemiro sometimes operating a little bit further up. When United are in possession, we switch formations. And I'm actually going to do a separate video on this. But we switch to having three at the back. Uh, let me turn this off there. I can sort of show you what I mean. Uh, if, it's, if it's the low going forward like that, we drop into three at the back. It's Varane, Martinez... If we've got both of our full backs up, then one of our midfielders drops back. And, oh, spoiler alert, Fred's not going to play this game. And quite a lot of the time, that's actually Christian Eriksen in that sort of role. Actually, I don't know whether, I think he's to the left or is it to the right? I think that's about right. And then Casemiro, it's basically what De Jong would have done had we signed De Jong. And Casemiro sometimes operate a little bit further forward, but sometimes it switches. And Casemiro is the furthest one back. This is where you create those overloads up here. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on this. You can see how many bodies we've therefore got in that area of the pitch. That's where the 3 1 6 formation really does work quite well. Um, I think it'll be Casemiro and Ericsson. I don't think it'll be Casemiro and Ericsson. I absolutely know it's going to be Casemiro and Ericsson. And I think that's something that's a bit different about this United team this year. You can actually say with some real confidence what our starting 11 is going to be. And I think that that has to be considered a compliment to what Ten Hag is doing. And I think the players know that too. So for me, it's Casemiro. And I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing. And I think across the course of the season, this, this trio is going to get better and better and better. Bruno, Casemiro and Eriksen. They seem to know each other's roles. They seem to blend with each other quite well. I think they complement each other quite well as well. Now, I want to see more of Casemiro sort of dominating this area of the pitch. You know exactly what. I want to see him winning the... Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to this new tool. That's quite good, though. Winning the ball back in this area. Just make that your home, bro. No one's coming in here. Nobody's coming in here. It's my zone. My zone. And that's what he's continuing to do. But look, moving on from those three in midfield, let's have a conversation about Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford against uh, Omania epitomised the wastefulness that we had. But also, at the same time, epitomized how impressive we were going forward in chance creation. I thought his movement was very good. His decisions in creating chances were very good. His finishing, not so much. But Marcus Rashford will absolutely be starting this game, in my opinion. I want to see Rashford. Look, I think Rashford's been really quite impressive in these areas in the last few weeks. He's got five goals in eight games, so it's not as if he hasn't been scoring as well. What let him down was just his finishing. Rashford's got to find the corners, man. He's got to get himself maybe into a position over here so he can then fight. He's just got to be a bit smarter with his finishing. I think his movement overall is really quite good. And the partnership down here, I think he could have with Shaw on Sunday, will be quite effective. But I think Rashford will start. And I actually think we'll see both Anthony and Ronaldo keep their places. Now, that kind of depends on whether or not Martial's fit. If he's fit, it will come as a little bit of a surprise. He didn't try; he wasn't fit enough for Omania. Uh, so Ten Hag basically said, "Look, let's see whether he's fit or not to start on Sunday." He was fit to start against Everton, and he got the assist for Anthony's opener. Then Ronaldo came on, and he got the winner. Both of them affected the game. I think if Martial's fit, Martial starts. But I tell you what, Ronaldo's starting to look a little bit better, uh, and I think he will he will only continue now to look better. I want to see something on Sunday, right? Kind of not unrelated to Ronaldo. I want to see Anthony try and go on that side there. I want to see Rashford try and go on the outside there. Because as soon as you do that, Ronaldo will get into that position there. And we did it so much in the preseason, didn't we? Those cutbacks, like a fire cross into that position. And there will be no man better for that. 
and popping Ronaldo right there and doing it. And I think he'd, he'd score goals of plenty if United were to play like that. But that would be my starting 11. Shaw, Martinez, Varane and Delo is the back four with De Gea and Gold. Don't need to talk about De Gea. Uh, a midfield three. I think it's settled now. Our best midfield three is that midfield three. Bruno, Eriksen, Casemiro. And a front three of Ronaldo, Rashford and Anthony, depending on Martial's fitness. And as I said, the main message from Ten Hag will be, just do what you did against Omanir at home. Just do what you did against Everton away. Just do what you did against Omanir away. But finish better. 34 chances we had, and we had to wait until the 95th minute for McTominay. The team doesn't have to change. The build-up doesn't have to change. The ruthlessness and the clinical nature has to be improved in front of goal. And if we do that, at some, trust me, at some point it will click. I hope it's on Sunday. Maybe it will be. But Newcastle will be a tough game. As I said, these next three games will, it will not define our season, but given we've only, well, we've got 10 games, nine, eight, nine or 10 games until the World Cup. Ten Hag will want those results. Let's actually count them here. Uh, our last game before the World Cup is Fulham. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, I've got a spot on. Nine games. Let's start off by beating Newcastle on Sunday. It won't be an easy game at all. Bruno Guimaraes is really bang in form. They're a team that's definitely better than they were uh, last season under Eddie Howe. We're at home. Let's exert some dominance. Let's get three points. 15 out of 18. Let's make it 18 out of 21. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think in the comments.